<laughs> Nobody needs a huge, beautiful, single fillet. Maybe they do if they want a nice presentation. <laughs> what the heck? Hey everyone, it's Kristen. Welcome to my home kitchen. This week's genius recipe is for a 10 second trick for making any salmon more delicious and probably most other fish and probably most other things. Even maybe ice cream. So this recipe comes from Mark Matsumoto of the long running blog and YouTube channel, No Recipes. And as you can see here, bottom line, the trick is to use the power of dried mushrooms to make things more delicious. Any other time that I have made a recipe that calls for dried mushrooms, it has come out so delicious, but I've always needed a plan. I've always needed to either soak them in advance so that they're soft enough to chop up and cook with and add into things like pasta sauces and risottos and soups, and you get that flavorful liquid too. Or you have to pull out your spice grinder and grind them up and then commit to washing your spice grinder. Also, you have to have a spice grinder. But this is the first trick that I've seen where you can harness the power of dried mushrooms as easily as you would salt or pepper. Here is Mark to tell you more. Shiitake mushrooms are something that's used to add umami to Japanese dishes um, for a very long time. And the usual way it's done is it's soaked in water in order to take out the flavor and the umami into the liquid. And the liquid is used as a stock, but it limits its uses in terms of what you can uh, add it to. So I figured out by, you know, grating it on a microplane or putting it in a spice grinder, you're able to create a powder that you can use to knead into like a pasta dough, or to use to coat salmon or, or meat with, um, which makes it infinitely more flexible and a great way to add umami to a dish. So this is a little thin hunk of wild coho salmon. It will work with any salmon and probably any fish you wanna cook. The great thing about this technique from Mark is that it will work with any way that you like to cook your fish, whether you wanna pan fry it or grill it or broil or high heat roast it, or in this case, I'm going to be slow roasting it because it happens to be my favorite way to cook salmon based on a recipe from Sally Schneider that I wrote about in Genius Recipes years ago. Lightly oil it and season it with salt, pepper, and whatever else you like. So when it comes to seasoning salmon, I've seen a lot of citrus, a lot of herbs, a lot of spice rubs, but this trick from Mark is the only one where I saw mushrooms being used as easily as any of these seasonings would be applied. And the trick is just one of these, a microplane. All right, these are all the kinds of dried mushrooms that I have on hand. Some porcinis, some maitakes, some wood ear, some teeny little dried shiitakes, and some more moderately sized dried shiitakes. And some will grate a little bit more easily than others, like these big meaty fat shiitakes. If you're doing this coating for the salmon, it usually works better if the flakes are a little bigger versus a powder, which is why I'll usually use the microplane. It creates like sort of bigger flakes. So if you're like pan frying the salmon, for example, and you want kind of a crust on the outside, um, the bigger particles just create a sort of a better coating and a sort of a better crust. Depending on how much mushroom you use, you may not taste a mushroom flavor at all. That is what is so interesting about this technique is it just makes things taste more delicious, but not necessarily screaming at you, this is shiitake salmon or this is mushroom salmon. If you are not sure, here's what you can do. Only season half of it with the mushroom and then taste the difference. The side with the mushroom is going to tell you, wow, I seasoned this really well. I cooked it perfectly. I am an amazing cook. The other side will probably also taste good, but it will just taste a little bit more, you know, one note, a little more like health food, a little less well-rounded. Try it out. Slow roasting with fish happens very fast. This will be done in like 10 to 15 minutes. I'll show you how to check. Okay, this needs to go in the oven at 275. While that's cooking, here's Mark to explain how exactly the mushroom is making the salmon so much more delicious. You know, these taste receptors for umami, they're kind of like a Venus flytrap. And uh, there are a couple compounds that create that taste of umami, one of which is uh, called glutamic acid or, or glutamate. You know, that sort of goes in and registers that, ooh, I found umami, lets your brain know that I'm tasting umami. But shiitake mushrooms in particular have another compound called guanosine monophosphate. It's a nucleic acid 
that also fits into these taste receptors. So if you have a little bit of glutamate here in the back, you've got your uh, GMP or guanosine monophosphate that comes in the front and it creates a synergistic relationship. So it's kind of like one plus one equals 10. And, uh, and that really, really gets your sort of umami taste buds, letting your brain know that this is really, really delicious. That happened really fast. This was a really skinny filet of salmon. So I'm glad I checked it at like eight minutes. It cooked quickly. Here's how you can tell if it's done. If you have an instant read thermometer, it'll be 120 degrees if you poke it into the fattest part, but also it will flake easily if you kind of poke it with a fork or with your instant read thermometer. Here, I'll just do it like this. Yeah, so, ooh, yeah. Look at that. And don't worry if there's a little bit of this white stuff coming out, that's albumin, it's totally harmless. It's just some like coagulated proteins. It can often indicate that your fish is getting to be overcooked. But the great thing about this slow roasting technique is that even if you overcook it a little bit, it will still be super moist and delicious and not dried out. The two other cues that Sally Schneider gives are that you can stick a fork in without meeting a lot of resistance, showing that it's flaking easily and it's not uh, still kind of like squishy and raw inside. And then the other thing is that you can easily separate the flesh from the skin, which I'm going to try to do now. And it'll probably be awkward because this is a skinny piece of salmon. The reason I want to separate it from the skin is because I want to crisp up that skin. Come on, skin. Oh, that's fine. Look at that good salmon. <laughs> Go over there. Okay, I switched the oven to broil. I'm putting my beautiful salmon skin. I'm taking all the salmon itself off because I don't really wanna broil that. But the skin is going to turn into a golden, bubbling, crispy chip. Don't walk away. It tends to escalate quickly. It's like golden, 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 golden. Oh, really, really golden. Oh, black. The darker it gets, the more it absorbs. Ooh. Mmm. These are gonna be like potato chips. While those salmon chips cool, I'm gonna show you what you do if you destroy your salmon as you're taking the skin off like I did. Turn it into a salmon salad. Gorgeous. Doesn't even matter that it fell apart. And that'll be our lunch. I think these are cool enough. I flipped them over just to make sure they got extra crispy. Look at that. Oh yeah. So while a crispy salmon skin is always gonna be super tasty, the extra mushroom powder on there is going to make these so delicious that you will never wanna skip that step again. Here's our lovely salmon salad with crispy chips. Mm. Think of the best salmon you've ever made, whether it was on the grill or in the oven or on the stovetop. Add just a layer of extra deliciousness and that is what this trick will get you. Or if you've never cooked fish before because it seems a little intimidating and it's easier just to order it at restaurants, this is the perfect most forgiving, most rewarding way to start. And the great thing about it too is that it's definitely not limited to just salmon. You can, once you know this trick, and if you have a microplane, you can grate dried mushrooms over anything you like. Actually, Mark has a lot of ideas on the subject. It's just, it's a quick way to add a lot of flavor, just like you would sort of sprinkle Parmesan onto pasta. You can, you can sprinkle this onto stir fries, onto something before you pan fry it, uh, mix it into, meatballs or add it into sauces or soups. I'll also grate it on top of plant-based pastas in place of cheese to, to bump up the umami of the, of, the, of the dish. Mark mentioned to me that candy cap dried mushrooms happen to be really great over ice cream because they have a really sweet caramelly flavor. But also when I first started my research on Mark's technique after I stumbled on it on his blog, the first thing that I saw was from a Japanese shiitake company stirring it into vanilla ice cream. So I figured I'd try just with the shiitakes I have.
Mmm, there's the mushroom. Mm hmm I like it. It just makes it a little bit more complex. It's, you know, think about adding salty caramel or desserts that have miso in them when you add a, a savory element to a sweet thing. It just makes the sweet a little bit more nuanced and interesting. I think this is worth a try. I wanna know, what are you going to grate dried mushrooms over now? And also, what other cool ways have you been cooking with dried mushrooms all along? I wanna hear about them. Please let me know in the comments. Also, don't miss this week's episode of the Genius Recipe Tapes when I get to talk to Mark so much more about not just the history and the whys of this technique, but also just more about what it was like to be among the earliest food bloggers and still run his food blog up to this day and launch a really awesome YouTube channel explaining the whys behind recipes too. Check out his channel, No Recipes. Thank you so much. We will see you in two weeks.